but I have been known to close a few dance floors and nightclubs at you know travel conferences back in the day. Fantastic. Good morning and welcome back to our time vlog. Today I have Matt Mason with me, who is the CEO of CT Partners. Very excited to have you on the show. He was, uh, Matt is a previous uh, mentee himself. Welcome on the show, Matt. Thanks, Timo. It's great to be here with you. Uh, Matt, before we go into the actual interview, I'd like to start with a little icebreaker. And I'd say we do start with, are you a, I know the answer probably, are you a cat or dog person? Definitely a dog. And are you an early bird or a night owl? It depends on the situation. <laughs> I'd say during lockdown, I've become an early bird. Um, but I have been known to close a few dance floors and nightclubs at you know, travel conferences back in the day. <laughs> so a, a little bit of both, but nowadays probably leaning towards early bird. Mm. And your favorite travel destination is? Mongolia is probably the destination that surprised me and was my favorite, uh, very hard decision. Mm -hmm. Interesting, okay. Awesome, Matt, you have done the time program, as I just mentioned in a little intro yourself. Um, when did you start the program? So I first inquired about time um, in 2017. And at that time I was in Singapore. And mm -hmm. uh, when I inquired, they said that they didn't facilitate any mentor relationships outside of Australia. Uh, but the seed was planted. And uh, when I came back to Australia mm -hmm. a year later, um, I inquired again and I eventually enrolled in early 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, what was your expectation out of the program? So when I first looked at it, uh, I was interested in learning, I guess, new skills, um, professional development and understanding more about what was required, particularly in the Australian travel industry. I'd, I'd had about 15 years of experience working uh, in Asia and running different companies in Asia. So I was, I guess, concerned about my transition back into the Australian industry. So part of it was about, you know, the skill development. And I thought that having a mentor outside of my you know, current company was a good idea because you can discuss perhaps more openly with an external mentor. Uh, and I also expected to meet a whole bunch of great people, um, which time certainly is a, an excellent network of like-minded travel industry people. Uh, so that was what my expectation on the, the networking side. What really surprised me was all the additional opportunities that came out of it. Um, I didn't realize there were going to be ongoing opportunities to learn from amazing guest speakers. Um, some of the speakers that I really enjoyed during my time program uh, were people like, say, Chris Hall, um, who is with ATG. He talked about his career journey, and you know that that speech actually inspired me to go back and take on some more study. Um, I'm, I'm now halfway through my executive MBA. Um, so I guess I, I didn't quite know what to expect, but I was certainly um, given a lot more from the program than I initially thought I'd, I'd get out of it. And it continues um, to be a great source of, of inspiration all through the last year or so when we've moved to online. Um, there's been some great weekly um, seminars. And again, it's, a, it's an ongoing relationship, which I didn't realize. I thought it was just six months, you know, get your certificate and, and you're done. Whereas now I realize in time, I've got colleagues and, and industry friends for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, actually something that surprised me as well. Something I didn't know before. And I think a lot of mentees that I speak to, especially when they start, are not really fully aware of. So thanks for highlighting that. Um, when you talk about the speakers that are actually attending the, or pre-COVID obviously, um, the, the functions, the network functions and share their stories. What always inspires me quite a bit is to hear about, um, to hear about, you know, their failures and where they really struggled, um, and how potentially mentorship helped them mm. to intensify the learning out of that. Um, do you have a favorite failure that helped you really to gain a next level? Yeah, I, I think like all of us, um, we have many failures and, and being self-aware is something that I've learned from you know, being a mentee. I think it really forces you to critically evaluate yourself and not just your prof professional skills, but your, your soft skills. And I think as a leader, one of the things I probably learned from the mentee experience and 
Uh, Michael Londrigan was my mentor, which I was um, very grateful to Mike for his time. Um, and I talked about, I was having a bit of trouble with my team at the time, taking them on a, um, a journey and getting them to rally behind this new business plan. We're changing direction within the company. And he asked me how I'd approach that. And basically I, I said, look, I've mapped out this great plan and I've got all these KPIs and, you know, I've, the, the direction's really clear in my head. I just don't understand why um, everyone else is not as excited as I am. And he said, Matt, just step back and, and think about the story behind it and, and why you're actually heading there. It sounds like a great plan and it sounds like you've done a lot of great research, but he said, make sure you take your team on a journey before you start drilling down into details about the plan and the KPIs. Think about the why, um, create a good story around the plan and that way you'll engage all your team members and it worked. Um, it worked on that individual role I was in back then. Um, and I, I continue to carry that lesson with me and always thinking about, you know, a, a story because I think all humans, you know, in the travel industry or any industry, people relate to, to good storytelling. Um, and so that's something I've tried to work on and tried to, I guess, take with me, um, for, for the journey forward as a, a leader. Mm -hmm. I think that's also a perfect description of a potential part of a mentor session, what is discussed and what a potential outcome might be. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, Matt, when you think about your career, obviously the challenges that you have experienced throughout your career are very different, um, obviously pre-COVID and post-COVID, I think the next generation of leaders will have very different issues to deal with and probably need a different skill set or a different approach. What advice can you give to the next generation of leaders in the travel industry? I think that the skills that people will be looking for, say in the next decade, will revolve around you know, being global and having an understanding of you know, international business. Um, I think right now, everyone in Australia is very focused on what's happening within our own you know, state borders or national borders, but next year, we're going to have a big rebound and companies will be you know, working on a global scale again. So I think you know, language skills, you know, cultural understanding um, is, is an important area. Um, and I'd encourage you know, young leaders to travel and get out there and perhaps even experiment with some work um, in another country when they get the opportunity. Um, in my studies at the moment, um, there's a big discussion around industry 4.0. And part of that is that the, the move away from say the industrial revolution into a more knowledge-based society and where service industries are starting to become more predominant. And obviously the, the travel industries are very much like a service based industry. Mm -hmm. So skills like problem solving, creativity, um, collaboration, I think is very important. And also putting the center of your decision-making around the customer. Um, that's something I think is very important that, um, People are empathetic towards the customer's needs, whatever business they're in, whether it's a hotel, a tour operator, a retail travel agent, um, having that ability to really empathize with your customer, particularly post COVID. I think you know, there's some really new challenges that are presenting our industry. And obviously we have to perhaps build an even closer trust and, and bond with the customer because they are going to be nervous. The first time somebody takes an international flight or sets foot in a hotel in a, in a new country, I think they are going to be nervous. So they really want um, people I can trust. And again, those soft skills that I talked about will be really important there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's a very interesting point that you make there. And I think the flexibility with the cancellation policy is the first sign of what you just described, um, where we just need a complete new frame around travel to get the trust back into the market, hopefully from, from a consumer point of view as well. Um, the skills you described, I would assume that's also what you look for when you hire staff. Uh, yeah, I, I always look for somebody with the right people skills. Um, and I, I think most jobs, you can probably train people on the, the how to, but, uh, I always look for a good cultural fit with the organization, somebody mm -hmm. that's going to represent, um, the organization well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, that you know, the, the, the people skills, the empathy, um, the customer service 
mindset. Mm. They're really important in my view. Mm. And um, from an employer point of view, like let's say I apply to your company, you would know me at all, and I have something like a time program on my CV. What does it tell you about me? Well, that, that shows to me that you're motivated, that you want to improve yourself. And you know, I, I think that it shows that you're a lifelong learner, that um, you're not just somebody that feels I've reached this level in my career, I'm going to stop now. Um, the fact that you've gone through the mentee program, it will open doors. Um, it certainly helped in my interview uh, because the people at CT Partners mm. were aware of the program and they were aware of uh, Michael Londrigan, who was my mentor. And um, mm -hmm. coincidentally, you know, in, in this role, I've already done uh, some business with a few of the people that have come out of the time program. So it, it shows me as a future employer that you have a network um, within the industry in Australia and that you're a person that, that likes to learn and, and challenge themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a last question for you, and I am very excited to hear the answer on that. <clears throat> so um, Tim Ferriss always talks in his tribe of mentors. Um, he always asks the same, I think, five or six questions, whatever it is. And one question I really like about it, that's um, what is something that you purchased recently for $100 or less that has the most positive impact on your life? Oof. Um, I would have to say a tennis racket, uh, believe it or not, because during the last six months, that's been something that I've really enjoyed doing. Um, it's a sport that my whole family you know, enjoys playing together. Um, being a one-on-one -on -one sport, even during lockdown, I've been able to catch up with some of my friends and, and have a hit of tennis. And the wellness that that racket represents um, is certainly worth much more than the $100 that, that I spent on it. Can I ask you, Timo, the same question? What what have you purchased for a hundred dollars? That's that a great answer. I think you've derived a lot of satisfaction from. <clears throat> that is that is a very good question uh, as well. Um, my tennis record is above a hundred dollars, unfortunately, so I can't mention that, and it's probably <laughs> five years old, so um, that doesn't count. However, I have. Um, people probably think I've scripted this because I talk about tennis all the time. So thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've recently um, bought a um, a coaching strategy for tennis players in regards to managing your emotion and tactics on the court. I'm quite a passionate player, so which also means okay. in certain situations I get rather um, emotional or, or passionate. And um, that course has really helped me to set my mindset on the court and focus on what's important, establish certain routines, you know, just to drive your mood back to a certain level where it needs to be. Um, there was far less than $100 and it had a huge impact. So that was definitely, uh, during lockdown especially, my investment that was very worth, very worth. So you're, yes. you're now a bit more like a um, Ash Barty or Roger Federer than a Nick Kyrgios when you hit the court. <laughs> Look, I was, ne I was never, <clears throat> I was never at the curious level, um, <laughs> and I'm not quite at the Barty or Federer level. So somewhere in between is probably where I'm at. <laughs> Hopefully, also skill wise. <laughs> we, we should have a hit someday soon, Timo. <laughs> Absolutely, I just wanted to say, if we can't um, unfortunately catch up a networking event soon, we should we should organize a little hit and yeah, put put our skills to test. I'm sure you will teach me a lesson there. <laughs> also, no, Matt, thank you oh, so much for your thank you so much for your uh, time and insights today. That was really great. I appreciate you for sharing that. And as I said, hopefully soon in person, either on a tennis court or a networking function. Thanks a lot, Timo. Um, great talking to you.